Folks, John Cordisco back again. Round seven of the European Team Chess Championship 2015 being played in Reykjavik, Iceland. If you remember, Reykjavik was the spa of the world famous 1972 Fisher Spassky match when I, when I was a boy. Got me playing chess, and I've been playing ever since. It's right next door to that hall. That would be cool to see. Anyway, this is a game from round seven. As White, Alexander Grishuk, a guy I like a lot. I think he's very underrated. The only problem with Alex is he just loves time pressure. He's a time time pressure junkie, and it's a shame, too. Anyway, and as Black, Fresnay from France. Grishuk is from Russia. Let's get to it. It's going to be a real low pay, but don't roll your eyes at the Berlin. This is actually, there's so many variations. We'll just go through it quickly here. We've all seen the Berlin a couple hundred million times. Knight, queen takes, king. Oddly enough, the computer likes rook to d1. Now, I'm sure my computer isn't as powerful as many. But h3 seems to be the common move now. h6, then rook checks. King comes over. Knight c3. The weird part is with the Berlin is it just seems that black is behind so many tempos. But it's tough to crack. Um, I remember listening to a story from Nigel Short a few years back. Vladimir Kramnik, the one that really perfected the Berlin, said to Nigel, he wants to make it so none of the world-class players play e4 anymore. And he's damn near succeeded. Knight e7, pawn, decides he's going to develop the bishop that way. Bishop f5, knight d4, making the bishop move back to h7. Now this is an interesting move here. The third choice in the computer, bishop a3 is the computer's choice. And I kind of like that as well. Knight comes over, finally gets the rook developed. A bishop, and oddly enough, that's move 15, and it says last book move. As we all know, these world-class players, they got so many variations down in Berlin. I mean, it gets, it gets crazy. Uh, maybe it's a plug for Fisher Random, <laughs> to be honest with you. A6, C4, C5. Knight comes to f3. Okay. Nice pawn on e5. Kind of cramping down black a little bit, but the f pawn can't really help him right now, so he's pretty much the minor pieces have to guard him. Knight c6, I like the move. Makes it so that Bishop can get out, and also at the same time hits the e5 pawn. Knight to f4. Bishop c2. Well, messed up there. Bishop c2. Sorry about that. Rook takes. Now, oddly enough, knight takes is the computer move as well. But I think all of us would instantly take king takes. Knight takes, I think, is better for one simple reason. Knight can come back now and come here. And that's, that's a good spot. That's a good spot for that knight as a blockader. E6. Now that was a calculated move, I think, on Grishuk's part. Computer likes knight to e1 to kick the bishop. I don't like that at all. 
Brick C1. Yeah, but what's the rook going to do after that? It's hitting on its own pawn. King to H2. No, all, all those moves, I believe, are no good. But E6 is a, it's a pawn sacrifice. F6. Should have taken it or not? Well, knight takes e6 is the computer's choice. Then after that, rook to e1, pinning the knight. And that starts to be a pain in the behind. I think f6 was the proper move. Rook to c1, chase the bishop off. Bishop goes to f5, hitting the pawn. If he had gone back to h7, it just would have went rook e1. Rook to e1 anyway. Bishop d6. Knight h4. Bishop c2. Look at that worthless. Rook. It's absolutely worthless on h8. It's almost like being down a rook. Knight to h5. Rook to c7. To give you an idea, if he had gone rook g8, bishop takes. Knight takes pawn. Can't play pawn takes because of the knight check. Knight takes, rook takes, king to f7, knight takes. Can't take any of the pieces. The knight's guarding the rook. Rook has to take the rook back to e2. And it's crazy, but that's the scenario. So I had to go rook h7 instead. Now look at that rook. He's stuck. Absolutely stuck. f4. He's finally going to bring the other pawn up to help the e pawn. Knight to c6. g4. Here comes the other pawn. Wants to go f5. Knight to d4. Try to cut off the scope of that bishop on b2. And hoping that it'll take. F5, of course, is the natural move, and that's what Grishuk does. Oddly enough, the computer likes this move as well. It doesn't like the move, but it's the best move in the position, is A5. Because really, black can't move. What's he going to do? Move the knight back to C6? Where's the bishop going to go? D3? I mean, he's all locked in. King comes up, a4, b takes, bishop takes, rook e3. And Grish is just keeping calm and cool. Now we're on move 30, and I have no doubt that Grishuk is in time trouble. He's a time trouble junkie. It's, it's, it's a phrase I use sometimes in chess. It's, it's, a, it's trying to get perfection. The goal is perfection, but perfection is never reached because we're human beings. And I think Alexander is constantly looking in the course of a game and spends way much time looking for the absolute 100% best move. It's good to make good moves, but you got to make sure your time is okay, too. B6, what else can he do? Knight G6. Now that rook is stuck there. King D8. Rook D3. Crucial, calm, and cool. And this is where I think Freshenay messes up. I think it's a natural move. He says to go king to c8. And that is a mistake. Absolute mistake. Everyone thinks, well, go ahead. Just push, right? Bishop has to take, but he doesn't. Bishop can come back. Just as calm and cool and collected. Bishop goes king e3. Bishop c2 just to harass the rook. Now comes the rook around to a3. I and mean, that's why black moved his king over. That rook ever gets in there, he's going to get mated. Knight takes. I mean, what else can he do? Pawn takes. Bishop takes. Rook to a8 check. Now, technically, black is up a pawn right now. Rook to g8. What to do? What to do? 
You're it's tough. You're black. What do you do? Bishop B1. Do you take the knight? Can't really. F5. Bishop takes. Bishop takes. Pawn takes. Computer likes B5. But he goes king to C6. And looks like black is just falling apart. If he had gone B5, would have went C takes. King B6. Go A4. It's all bad. A4. King can't come in. Can't even push the pawn to B5 now to try to get the king in because the double pawns are both guarding B5 for white. King has to come back. It's just maneuvering here. Matter of technique. Rook G7. Can't trade rooks. And see if he can find the move here, folks. The winning move that causes black to resign. Pause the video and see if you can find it. A move for white. The move is... Rook takes, and that's where Fresh and A resign. Give you an idea. After King takes, B takes, and the game is over. White can give up this pawn, but Black's going to lose this pawn here. I ran through the computer after this, and there's a really good reason why Fresh and A resigned. So there you have it, folks. Go game by Grishuk, round seven of the European Team Championship 2015 from Reykjavik, Iceland. I hope you enjoyed it. I want you all to remember, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.